Hello, welcome to a fun video where we're going to hunt a box of nickels. I've got one of these sideways nickel boxes here that um, have the nickels on their side. Um, these boxes usually aren't very nice to me, but I have found some really cool finds in them nonetheless. Let's get into this box and see what is on the inside of these rolls and if there are any really cool finds in here. Intro, take 473. Cue music. Cute coins. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Now pick them up. I'm not rich. Roll number one, and we've come across our first find here. 1958. This is a Denver. Very cool. It's our first find of the hunt in the first roll. Hopefully, that's a good sign for the rest. Roll number two kind of went everywhere when I flopped it open. And uh, right here in the middle, I saw we had a 1940. Nice. That is a Philly. Awesome. That's our second find in our second roll. Very cool. Roll number eight. And uh, I've come across the Nasty Corroded 1958. This one is a Denver. It's another Denver for the stack up here. Uh, is a little bit nasty and corroded, but it's still an old nickel. All right, roll 12, and we got a really cool find here. We got a low mintage, 2024 out of Denver. This one is pretty nice shape, slightly circulated. You got a few dings, some surface uh, spotting on it and stuff. Um, it's interesting that I found a Denver and not a Philly here. The, um, the Denvers are lower mintage than the Phillies this year. Uh, unless they meant more, this is the lowest year that the, the lowest mintage nickel um, since the 50s and I've talked about it briefly in some of the other videos but I'll I'll, uh, I'll go over that later uh, when I wrap up and break down the mintages and stuff then but uh, really cool to find a Denver one in the uh, in the hunt here I believe those are selling for about five bucks online a, a piece just because of how uh, low mintage they are. Um, unfortunately, this one has a slight bit more circulation than a brand new roll, but uh, interesting to find a Denver on this side of the Mississippi. Missis, miss, Mississippi. Uh, did I say it right? <laughs> Is, uh, yeah. So, but anyways, really cool find. Roll 14. I've come across a couple here that have caught my eye. I was going through it, got to this one. There's one up, uh, back here. Um, right here, I think. Yeah, that one looks like it has an older look. This one does too. There's a couple others in here. Uh, this one, um, that looks like an 80s. But I wanted to check those two here and see if they are or not. So we're going to take a look here. So this one does have that older look, that older patina. You can see those striations across there. Um, those were a bit more common on the older nickels. Um, so this one does not have a mint mark. So let's take a look. Ooh, 42, a 42 out of Philly. Nice. That's a nice find. And then, uh, where are we back here? Um, this one. Oh no, this one's just a circulated. It's going to be dirty circulated. 80s or 70s? 76. Yep. Um, <laughs> looked at enough nickel backs to tell that, uh, the difference between the designs um, let me just zoom in. I don't know if you can tell, if you can look and see some differences there. Just, um, the Monticello building has a little bit more defined than the older one. And, uh, the lettering is a slight difference. And you can see the five cents there is just a slightly different font and what have you. Um, very uh, slight differences, but uh, I've looked at enough nickels that I can kind of tell, and I get it right about 50% of the time. So, I mean, half right is better than half wrong, right? <laughs> okay, let me get back to the hunt here, and uh, I'll be back and let you know if there's anything else. Roll 15, getting towards the end here. We've come across the 1952. This one, ooh, it's a little scratched up on the back with no mint mark. So that is a dim, uh, Philly. That is a Philly. That's what I was going to say. All right. <laughs> roll 17. Back towards the end of this roll, we come across a 1955. Nice. That is a Denver. The Philly is a semi-key date for this, this year. 
but Denver is a not. But still, it's old nickel. Boom. Roll 20. And we have hit a 1957 here. Let's take a look. 1957 from Denver. Nice. That's another 50s nickel there to go up here. Very cool. Still on roll 20 and a few coins back from that uh, 57. We've got another Riffrey Cement mark here. An older looking nickel. I figure let's take a look on camera and see. It is a 1958. Nice. That's two finds in this one roll. All right, we have a great find on this roll. Roll number 30 is going through this roll. And right back here, do you see what we have? We have ourselves a buffalo nickel. How about that? We got a buffalo in one of these rolls. Let's see, is there a date? I can't make out a date. I might be able to make out a date if I look at it closely. Let me look at this and see if I can find a date on there. It might be a 31, but let me take a look. I can't quite make that out. Okay, well, I took a good long look at this. The last digit is an 8. I don't know if we can see there. Is that a 1918? Looks like a 1918 right there. That's what I'm seeing. 1918. I'm going to go with 1918. I might put a drop of Nicodate on there. Um, Maybe. But that is a, I'm going to go with 1918 for now and take a good look at this and see if I can uh, verify that. But that's what I'm getting here. If I turn it this way, I can quite see it looks like a 1918 from that angle. So yeah, 1918 Buffalo. This one is from Philly. No mint mark on the back. So that is a pretty cool find. Okay, I'm now on roll 23. That last roll that I found the Buffalo in was roll 20, not 30. So I was 10 off. But on roll 23, we've come across a pretty rough 1955. Does this have a mint mark? Does this have a mint mark? I don't see a mint mark. This might be a semi-key date. 1955 out of Philly is a semi-key date. Let me just verify that real quick. And uh, we might have a semi-key date in these rolls too. Okay, so yep, I took a look at this one. I had to... Wipe away a little of the dirt there because it looked like there was something there. There is no D. There's just a thick layer of dirt on this. I might uh, switch this around in a little bit of um, acetone, pure acetone, not fingernail polish, to see it, to get some of that dirt to just release off of there so it'll be a little bit cleaner. But that is a 1955 semi key date. All right, we are on roll 24. Um, I think that's where we're at. But I have some back here that have an older look to it. I just poured this roll out. I figured let's take a look on camera. This one looks like it might be a dirty 80. Yeah, it's 80 something. I'll look at that later. But uh, there's some right here. This one, this one, and possibly this one. It just has that older look to it. So I figured let's take a look. There's no mint mark on reverse, although it does have that older look to it. 1954 from Philly. Nice. Right behind it, another no mint mark. Oh, 1940. Nice. And we'll take a look at this one. Uh, 64 still has that older look with the rear face of mint mark, but that one was produced uh, over a billion of that coin was produced. So I don't really count the 60s for the fines. Um, but yeah, two fines in that roll. Nice. If I do come across any others, I will let you know. But yeah, that was pretty cool. Two two finds in one roll. Awesome. Roll 25. Working my through. I got another one back here that looks older. I figured let's take a look. We got a 1957. This one is from Philly. Nice. Nice. That's another old nickel to go up here with the rest. Okay, now I've made it to roll number 30. Just poured out the roll and right here. It looks like we got a penny hiding in the roll. So let's take a look at the penny. 1989 out of Denver. Well circulated there. So I have maybe an extra cent. I'll count these up and see if that is an extra cent or it uh, took a place of a nickel. Well, um, well, I got a penny in the roll. That's not quite what I'm looking for, but it's definitely not a nickel. Roll number 34. 
Just open this up. We've got another penny in the middle here of this roll. This is our second penny. This one is a 2004. All right. Oh, well, that's two pennies in this hunt. Um, the last roll was short one nickel. I'm just going to assume this one is as well. So, well, you know, even in the bank wrap rolls, you still get the wrong points. Roll 35. Put another 1957 here. Uh, this one is a Denver. All right, let's put it up here with the others. We have made it to roll 41, and we've got a 1941 here. Nice, that's another old nickel to go up here. Uh, 41 in roll 41. Well, continuing on theme, I opened up in 1942, and back here, let's see if I get it on camera here. Back here, I notice we have a 1942. This one here might be older as well. It has that look to it. But, roll 42, we got a 1942. This does not look like silver, and it's not. It is a Philadelphia. Nice. Well, that is a 1942 in roll 42. Let's take a look at this one here. Um, I'm not seeing anything else stand out. Hey, a 1941 as well. <laughs> so 41 had a 41, 42 has a 41 and a 42. Very cool. All right, let's see if there's anything else in here. We'll get to the next roll. Roll number 46, and we've hit a 1956. All right, this one is a Denver. Well, it is an old nickel. It doesn't match the roll number, though. Um, I was hoping that trend would continue, but it has not. Oh, well, four rolls left. We'll see if there's any more finds. All right, roll 48, I poured it out. Had to take a double look at the nickel back here. And uh, this box made me wait. Um, let me move it a little bit. I don't know if we can see it right there on the camera yet. But uh, yeah, that is a war nickel. That is a Philadelphia war nickel. This is a 1943 Philadelphia 35% silver nickel. Very cool. Very cool find. I don't get many of those, and so that is an awesome find. A much welcome find indeed. 48 rolls in, and this box just keeps getting better. Okay, it is time to wrap up here. Um, lots of interesting, fun finds. This box had just a little bit of everything. Um, and some, you know, really cool stuff. We ended up with two pennies, and um, I'm short eight cents because of those. But that's going to happen sometimes when the rolls... Um, we had 7 from the 40s, 12 from the 50s, including the ones we have down here, which are the best finds in the box. We had several awesome finds. We had the 1918 uh, Buffalo Nickel, and then we had the 1943 Silver War Nickel here out of Philly, so that's really cool to find some silver in the nickel box. I don't see the silvers very often here, so finding that is awesome. Um, I had the 1955 Philadelphia, which is a semi-key date, so that's cool. And then we had a 2009 lower mintage nickel and a 2024 Denver low mintage nickel. So between uh, so 2024 has the current low mintage, and I'll put the mintage on the on the screen here. It's lower than the 2009 mintages. And but to go to get a lower mintage than the 2004, you have to go back to 1959 to get a lower mintage nickel than the 2024 Denver. So that's how low that nickel is minted. Um, most of the rest of the mintages between you know 1960 and present are you know in the hundreds of millions, sometimes up into the billions. So <laughs> having a mintage that low is uh really cool really interesting um so if you do come across the 2024s try to save try to set some aside for you to um hold on to because they're going to hold a little bit of value especially in nice uncirculating condition i can't find 2009s in a uh, nice shape so um those are always hard to find <laughs> and so i'm sure the 2024s are going to be even harder uh, there's still a couple months left of the year and they still could produce more uh, but the numbers haven't haven't changed in the past, I think, four or five, maybe even six months. So I'm not thinking they're going to produce more in the in the next uh, 
two, two and a half months to about two months. Okay, so we'll check these to see if they fill. I've got some over to side as well to check against the albums. Um, I don't know if the silver and the semi-key date nickels, I don't know if those spots have been filled yet or not. I haven't checked, checked the album. So we will find out here in just a second if those fill or not. Plus the, um, I think I need a 2009 Denver actually for the album as well. And the 2024 Denver, that's the first 2024 I've come across all year. Hopefully it's not the last because I need to get my hands on some of those while they're still in nice shape. <laughs> All right, let's check those albums out. In our first album here, we already have the 1943 Philly Silver, so that is not going to upgrade. This one in here is better than that. However, I do have a fill for the book. The semi-key date is going to fill the spot, which is really cool, putting a semi-key date in the album. I did hit up some acetone to get some of that dirt off. A lot of it sur was surface level, and I could have just wiped right off. Um, it is a pretty circulated, nasty coin, but I figured the uh, acetone would have helped protect it better. So we're going to plug that in and fill that spot, and that is it for this album. And for our second album here, there was no fills or upgrades. For book number three, got this 1996. It's just a much better, cleaner example than the one that's in there. Um, it's not perfect, but I am going to go ahead and upgrade that one. As for the 2009, we did get the Denver, and it is not nicer than the one that is in here, so there's no filter upgrades here. But you can tell that these are real circulated, and these are the best I have found so far. Do need nicer ones, but probably not going to happen. Would be nice, though. And for the final spot in the book, we do have that 2024 Denver to go in the spot, and it is in pretty nice shape, so that is pretty cool. Very nice find. That is all for the albums here. So there we have it. Two spots filled, one spot upgrade. Pretty nice for the albums. Really cool box. Um, lots of good finds. The, you know, the War Nickel, some My Key Date, some Lower Minish Nickels, and the Buffalo. Overall, I'd say that is an awesome box with all the cool stuff in it. Um, so that is it for this hunt. Um, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up, helps me out, and drop a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Have a great day. And I want to give a very special thank you to all the viewers who have signed up as members. Thank you very much for going above and beyond to help support the channel. I very, very much appreciate it. If anyone is interested in becoming a member, feel free to check out the link below. Again, thank you very much for your support. Well, I do hope you enjoyed the video. And if you click on that link right there, it'll help me out. And then I have a couple videos over here that is recommended. So if you would like to watch another one, I would definitely appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Have a great day.